Okay, well, let's get more from a guy whose company is building a vital piece of equipment for the Artemis program, the Canadorm, Canadorm 3. The builder is MDA, based in Brampton, Ontario, and we're joined by Mike Greenlee, the CEO of MDA. It's great to see you. Great to see you, yeah. So this, you're building this arm. We know at the previous Canadarms, they would manipulate satellites for the shuttle or whatever. Um, this is going to be for the L Lunar Gateway, which will be the, the space station orbiting the moon. Absolutely. Yeah, incredible day for Canada today to demonstrate the capacity of the Canadian space program with Jeremy as one of our leaders and extraordinary astronauts. And then our technology in terms of the artificial intelligence based Canadarm3, which will be our next generation robotics that will go on Gateway, um, as you indicated, that will be a, a new space station that will orbit the moon. The current space station is about 400 kilometers up. This new space station, 400,000 kilometers out by the moon. Right, but it's in orbit around the moon. It will be in orbit around the yeah, moon, that's yeah. right. And this thing, it's, it's almost like a big hydra or a big insect or an octopus missing some limbs. It can crawl around on the vehicle. Um, it'll be a, the Canada Arm 3 will be a, a two arm, a large arm and a small arm. They'll work together as a robotic system. Um, it will be able to uh, yes, step, step and walk around on, on top of the space station. Uh, that'll be part of its capabilities, correct? And what will it, will it be for bringing satellites in, in, into the space station? It, it'll be used used for uh, assembly of the space station, it'll be used for maintenance and operation of the space station. It can uh, potentially uh, uh, be involved in, uh, you know, capturing and working with vehicles as well, yeah. What, what will this one be able to do that the previous two couldn't? Um, the unique feature about this one is really autonomy. So we're putting a bit of work into an artificial intelligence based uh, control system mm -hmm. with the, uh, the the gateway being 400,000 kilometers away. Uh, mm -hmm. Communications is a bit further away. What's the, sorry, what's the time lag for a uh, 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 radio signal? I don't have that number. Oh, I'm sorry, head. okay, it, yeah, it, never it, mind. It, it'll be long enough though okay. that uh, the, and the, the communication bandwidth, we won't be uh, talking to it every day. So okay. we'll give it its tasks and it'll be using autonomy to go through its tasks. Okay, and so it can be controlled from Earth, though, if you need to do that. If it needs to do, yeah, there'll be a con control center at actually MDA in Toronto. Um, what else is Canada? So we should remind the viewers that the Artemis pro program, the first mission, Artemis, uh, the, the upcoming mission, they'll circle the moon. But then Artemis 3, they actually land on the lunar surface. Yeah, Artemis 1 happened this past fall. It was uncrewed. Yeah. And now Artemis 2, which we announced today, which will include Jeremy, our very successful Canadian astronaut, it will go around the moon to be able to test all the flight systems and uh, make sure that everything works properly for Artemis 3, which would happen probably a couple years later, um, to be able to land the first crews on the moon. Now, I, I do remember seeing that wonderful movie, Apollo 13, with Tom Hanks. And at one point in, this, in the capsule, they're actually using a slide rule <laughs> to calculate a trajectory. How much more advanced is the technology for this next lunar mission than it was back in the 60s? Well, certainly much more advanced. Like, obviously, computer processing is much more advanced and the you know, avionics and the like are much more advanced. So um, they, we, you know, we, the astronauts have to be prepared for anything, but uh, there's a, a, a lot more capability in uh, today's flight systems than there would have been back then. Will they bring a slide rule, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have my doubts somehow, yeah. yeah. Um, give us an idea of what else Canada is doing in the Artemis program. In the Artemis program, the, the, the big elements are uh, Canada Arm 3 for Gateway. Sure. Um, they, uh, the astronaut flights, obviously, in Artemis 2. In the recent budget that just came out, um, Canada announced a, a, a lunar utility vehicle, which would be like a, a rover for the lunar surface. Um, so that'll be very exciting. Uh, with, with more missions to come. The, the key thing about Artemis now is that, um, the, from my perspective as a, as a business leader and a member of the space community, mm -hmm. is it really is an indication that the next generation of the space economy is real. And so there are several Artemis missions, like up through 12 or 14, that they've already ordered the, the rocket systems and stuff for. So mm -hmm. these flights will become a regular activity. Uh, eventually becoming an annual thing or maybe multiple times a year. So beyond the robotics for Lunar Gateway, our Canadian astronauts are returning to the moon, the rover program that's coming for the moon, there'll be a number of other potentials, uh, uh, activities for Canada to get involved in as we go through the next decade. I see Artemis, the goddess of wild animals, the hunt, and of chastity and childbirth. And <laughs> she was Diana for the Romans, yeah. Yes. It's amazing. It's about time we got back to the moon, I think. It really is. There's a tremendous expansion in the space economy. Um, today, the space economy is about $400 billion a year, expanding to about $1.5 trillion a year as we get out into, the, out into the late 2030s, into the 2040s. And this Artemis program is a, is a key instrument in that, a key element of us returning to the moon and eventually setting up more permanent habitats. This time, we say we're going to the moon to stay. And what about Mars? How long will that take to land a, a human mission on Mars? Um, it would be in the the decade to follow, that would be a, a 2030s thing, I would think. 